What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be creating this very simple 3D Earth inside of After Effects. It's very simple, very straightforward. There are other techniques posted online that are much more advanced that create a much more realistic effect. But today, I wanted to show you some very simple techniques that can achieve a similar effect, but in a much quicker fashion. So let's get started. As always, feel free to check the description for the asset files I'm using and also the project files. First things first, we need our three assets. I have a Earth Cloud, which is a PNG. The black is clear. We have a Hubble telescope, like star image for the background. And we have the Steam Workshop web upload Earth that we're gonna be using to create our Earth. Okay, now the first step to get started is to create a new composition. We're gonna right click in our project panel over here and hit new composition. Opens up a composition window like this, and we're gonna set it at 3840 by 2160, frame rate 60. Let's do about a 10 second timeline. Call it take two. Okay, great. Now we can actually drag in our assets that we were using before. Let's go ahead and drag in the earth clouds and then drag in the earth picture right here. First things first, you actually wanna scale these clouds up to match the size of the earth, relatively. It looks pretty good right here. That's about the same size. Next up, you're gonna highlight both these layers in your layer panel, right click and do pre-compose. And we can call this earth comp, and then hit enter. Next up, we're actually gonna use an effect in After Effects called CC Sphere. So in your effects, in your effects and presets, type CC Sphere. Drag it onto the earth right here. And boom, we have a really quick and easy circle earth. We can actually drop down on the effect controls right here. If you don't see effect controls, hit window and then effect controls right here, opens up this window. We can actually make the radius much larger to zoom the earth in. And really quick, we wanna modify these settings to make the earth look a little bit more realistic. It's not perfect, but we wanna make it a little better. Let's drop down on the light and actually increase the light intensity a little bit to make it a little brighter. We can actually change the direction of the light to point it kind of towards the sky. We get that kind of angled earth light you normally see. Drop down on shading and decrease, and decrease ambient a little bit to actually kind of get rid of the earth. And now it actually looks like earth in space. If this is a, the effect you're looking for, I think this actually looks really great. Next, we want to jump into our effects and presets and type glow. We are gonna add a glow to the outside of this earth. You may actually like the way this looks and keep it this way, skip the glow part, but we're gonna add a glow for today. Now inside of our glow settings, we're gonna bring the threshold up to 100%, bring the radius up to about 126-ish. The glow intensity can be brought down a little bit and we can leave the composite original behind. Glow and all this other stuff is the same. From here, we can actually leave it kind of, the white glow is actually pretty nice. It gives it a nice eerie glow effect kind of happening on the earth, which is something we like. Next up, we actually want to make the earth rotate um, across the timeline. So what we're going to do is actually go to the rotation right here in effect controls, drop down and then just keyframe the Y rotation by clicking this little stopwatch. Scroll down our timeline a little bit and then rotate this as much as you feel desired is however much you want to rotate it. It doesn't matter. As you can see with a little bit of a pre-render, this earth is rota rotating nice and slowly across the background. It looks pretty good so far. Next up, we actually want to add a camera zoom to this. So what we're going to do is right click in our layer comp right here, go to new uh, null object, right click and then new camera. Opens up this little dialog box for camera. It doesn't matter. All these settings are fine and click and then just click OK. Next, we want to actually turn on our 3D layers. Now, if you don't see this little layer panel down here, what you're going to do is hover in the gray area, right click columns and go to uh, switches. Turn that on or off. If you don't see it, you need to go to right click columns and then switches to turn it on. Everything's back to normal. We can keep working. Next, we actually want to take the camera. And we want to parent it to the null. Same thing as before, if parenting is not showing, you can right click columns and then turn on parent and link, which will show these, super helpful. Then we wanna actually drop down on our null, drop down on transform, drop down on the position keyframe, keyframe this, scroll to the end of our timeline, actually zoom in a little bit. So as it's rotating, we're actually zooming in. And all the way down the timeline, it's gonna zoom in just like that. This is looking pretty good. Next up, we actually wanna put all this in its own pre-composition and actually create like a little bit of a depth of field effect that we can see in the next piece. 
So let's highlight all the layers, right click, right click and do pre-compose. Let's do this, uh, call it main one. It doesn't matter what it's called, but we're just gonna call it main one. Next, what we'll do is click on the layer, highlight it, grab your pen tool at the very top, um, and then actually draw like a bit of a, kind of like a sliver across this. As you can see, it'll make everything else disappear. Next is to duplicate this by holding Control D on your keyboard or Command D on your keyboard on a Mac. And now that you've duplicated the layers, click on the bottom layer, drop down, drop down on mask, and then click inverted on the mask. We just wanna like individually open these up because we're gonna be blurring one of them. So grab the one that is the wide angle right here, go to effects and presets and type gauze and blur. Drag gauze and blur onto this layer and actually blur it up a little bit. As you can see, it's looking pretty blurry. Not too much, not too much. Uh, let's make it really subtle, but enough to look pretty good. Let's do about six. Not too bad, not too bad. Now drop down on the mask, drop down on the feather, and let's feather it by about 200 pixels. A lot of feathering there. Next up, we actually wanna drop down on the top layer and drop down on its mask right here and also feather it by about 200 pixels. This will blend them both nicely together so they both look, it's one piece again. And now we have the blurred out top of the other blurred out bottom, but the center is in focus. It's kind of like that line blur you get on Instagram. It looks totally fine. Okay, great. This is actually looking pretty good. We have a nice blur, um, but now we have that last asset image we looked at before. We want to actually add stars in the background. So let's go back to our project and actually drag the Hubble telescope image into the background. We can actually scale it up to fit our composition and we can actually take effects and presets type Lumetri color and actually drag this onto the background to darken it. We want to make it pretty dark to actually kind of make it look a little more realistic in this case. We can actually bring the contrast up to darken it up even more, bring the whites out, make the stars shine. And that looks pretty good. And here is our finished piece. It looks pretty good, not too bad. Like I said before, there are more advanced techniques online to show you how to do this to make really crazy looking stuff, but it's much more time consuming and for a simple project or something new or just you're or you're just trying to learn new techniques. This is something I wanted to throw together for you guys. As always guys, I'm Max. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of the channel. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out and lets me create more videos. You can find more interesting things down in the description where you can reach out and support the channel. Other than that, thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.